YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer. We are finally back. I know, I know it's been a while, but everything's happening for a reason. I have a process with how I go about recording and playing uh, these games. Keep in mind, I, I have a regular working schedule like most of you, especially if you're out of high school or at least in college or uni, whatever. And yeah, I just don't have enough time to play Gallup Racer like every day. And not to mention, I always talk about it. If I play Gallup Racer every day, I'd get sick. I'll probably be playing the game. Um, I have to play it in the spurts that I do. That's what keeps me enjoying it. If I just play it every single day, I'll get bored and burn myself out. So we're getting right into it today. We have, I think, 11 races on the card. Uh, over 70% are grade 1s, grade 3s, and then we have a uh, an open allowance. Um, Two-year-olds will be here next month. So that's still sweet, but let's just get right into it. I'm starting things off quick today. No, 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 no challenges. Such a waste of time, honestly. Like, I hate it. It's such a stupid waste of time in this game to me personally. But uh, anyways, hope you guys are well. Uh, the website is up, by the way, if you haven't checked it out. I've been working on that for three months. HRG website, which will remain in beta probably the rest of this year as I add other things, is finally up. Check the description box below. I'll definitely have to make sure I change some of the links around uh, through the community but the website is there you guys will be able to check our progress in this game that way when i don't upload videos and you're wondering hey where's hrg with the 2004 episode now that you guys talk like that at all i'm i'm being funny but you know what i mean i want to keep you guys in the loop so we're starting off here with the i've been trying to pronounce this this grade one for about five minutes okay not five minutes maybe like two minutes but it's um the real life race is the Taka Karazuka Kinen. I it just uh, I can't. It, it it's it's complicated. Um, anyways, I will be doing that going forward in this series. I will be uh, actually saying the real names because you guys can read on screen. You see, it's the summer GP. But I want to put more emphasis on the real life uh, names again, like I used to do. I just probably won't be doing the graphics as much. I might. I don't know. I, I think some of you liked the graphics that showcase the real names. So if you did, let me know. I could go back to that because I'm going to start uploading more longer videos of this series again to keep you guys in the loop as well as being able to free up my time so I can focus on real horse racing, which is going to be my focus for the rest of this year. Not getting rid of gaming, just saying I'll make these videos longer so I can get them done sooner and then get to real horse racing. Anyways, uh, Angel Hearts is up here um, in the Tara or Takarazuka Kinen. Uh, it's the real name of this race in Japan. Um, this guy's going for the four-year-old mid and long yearly award. So this is an important grade one for us to win. I think he's also still chasing... Uh, where's Angel Heart? Sorry. I think he's still chasing a mild champ and a mid champ, which he's not really super close to either of those. He's kind of right in the middle with like grade ones and at every distance, except for like sprints. Uh, you see the good ability spurt corner... Or excuse me, last corner leader, uh, stretch burst. So... Um, Angel Hearts, he's still great. His speed doesn't look fantastic at all, but don't let that deceive you. That power and that heart rating with his response is what I think gives him the, ed uh, the edge. Um, the edge, like, oh my goodness. I can't even start an episode without just sounding like I'm a cartoon character from, like, uh, the Looney Tunes, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but anyways, I, I have high hopes that um fourth favorite here, but we should be able to be on the run for a win. So hopefully you guys are doing well, as always. Like I said, I will be covering horse racing a lot this year, more than I've ever covered it on the channel ever. So when I say expect way more real horse racing discussions, I mean expect a lot more of it. Um, but that's what I want to do. I've been wanting to do it. It's just like everything, time consuming, and my time is limited. So I have to prioritize things. But we're off in the Tara, the Taka Riz you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to call it the, the Summer GP since I can't actually pronounce this race name. Every other race we have today, I can pronounce. This is the only one that's giving me a, a problem and an issue so um some housekeeping as always we have to do um because i like to keep you guys in the loop i like to make sure people understand what i you know what content creators sometimes have to go through um i still get comments about how i play this game i'm just like you you can't be serious it's a video game does anybody have any idea why people obsess over whether somebody is good or bad at a video game that like you're not making probably any money off of like it does like if it's providing you a full-time living and it's helping you pay bills take care of kids family whatever and you being good at the game really dictates your living i understand that but when you're not playing a game that can dictate your your living and your survival 
I just, I still don't get the obsession with the skill. It's like, it's, it doesn't have to be a competition, people. I'm not in competition with anybody in this community, I promise. Like, it, that's not what motivates me to play Galbracer. I enjoy this game because it's a fun horse racing video game. You know, like, I don't care about being better than somebody else in the community. And I, I still get comments like that. It's just, it's so weird. I'm just like, if, if, if that's the only thing you can focus on, I just feel like you probably have some other things you should probably address in your life because that's a little concerning. Like, it's a video game. It's not real life. You know what I mean? You, you got to keep that in in in, um, in retrospect. But anyways, here we go. Last corner, leader worth Angel Hearts. Can anybody catch us down the stretch we come? The eight horses rolling. Who is that? That is Safe Express, the favorite with Dean. Come on, Angel. We got the power rating, and it looks like we're just going to hold on. Oh, let's go. Like I said, I felt we still had a good chance because for whatever reason, the game seems to think Angel Hearts is not capable of winning these races. They said, oh, yeah, here's a shot to finish in the money, but fourth place is the best we can offer you. I don't like... Don't disrespect my horses, okay? <laughs> now, there's one thing. It's a video game, and it doesn't matter, but don't disrespect my horses. I don't care if you like them or not. Don't disrespect them. You don't have to like them. That's actually the thing. You don't have to like my horses or anybody's horses, but don't disrespect them. Because I will never disrespect anybody's horse. Even if I think it's, it's, it's an absolutely awful, awful slow horse. I still think they're magnificent. Virtual or not, I just, you know, the worst thing I'll say is like, oh, that horse is a headache, you know? And that just means, okay, as a racehorse, quite, quite the issue to deal with, you know? But outside of that, like, um, yeah, let's, let's respect each other's horses. So that was a summer GP win at 11 furlong, so that's his second. <sighs> We're actually really close to a mid-champ title with Angel Hearts. I think I have to win a, um, I have to win on the dirt with him once. Um, but yeah, that was a great win for Angel Heart. Super, super happy for that victory. And um, yeah, we'll continue to roll on. So Extreme Kick, she'll be up in the Virgo Stakes here. This is the real-life Mother Goose Stakes. I don't even know if this race really ex still exists in real life. Like, why did they name a grade one the Mother Goose Stakes? <laughs> like, it's a book I read. <laughs> a children's book. Oh, Mother Goose. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Obvious Gourmet is here. I know a lot of you have used her for breeding. And she's a really good horse. So, yeah. Three-year-old fillies. Extreme Kick. This is going to be a big, big test for her. I still don't know a lot about her. She is the daughter of the late, great Secretariat, a.k.a. Formal Opera, in this game. She comes out of Toxic Blonde, who is a speedster. She has great abilities. Closer, stretch burst, tough. Close race, okay. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Slow track, not good. That doesn't really concern me. Usually in races I run, the pace is mid or fast. So, um, yeah, she's not impressive statistically if you're looking at her. And I st still don't know her speed, stamina, and power. The most important ratings, in my opinion, in this game. But a uh, third favorite, I don't really know what to expect. Um, I think I've been doing better with her, but still a little bit on the fence on what her true long-term potential will be as far as breeding uh, ca capacity. But... You know, um, so I'm looking at my notes. How am I going to do this? I've organized my notes differently. Remember, I think in the last 2003 episode, for those of you that watched, half of the episode was me, like, realizing my notes were so out of whack. Not the case here. I took about 45 minutes to re, um, reorganize my 2004 notes. That way I can actually get this stuff recorded down uh, properly once the race is over. All right, perfect start, finally. Close to it. Good start there for Extreme Kick in the, the Mother Goose Stakes. <laughs> uh, my goal with her is just to win as many dirt races as I can and see where she goes. I'm not sure. She should have grade one potential in there, but like, I, sometimes I just don't know with some of my horses. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. She wants to be further back, but I mean, like the I don't want to run that far back. Not in a race like this. I'll keep her at the I'll keep her in the mid pack. Well, she can run here. She's not super super crazy about running closer towards the front, but she's not gonna like complain too much. She'll be like, okay, this is not where I want to be ideally, but like I'm okay. And you guys know I like a flexible horse that can kind of run in several spots as opposed to a horse that strictly wants to be in one position. That's just my personal preference. It, doesn't take anything away from the horse. I just like a horse that can kind of fluctuate. Because you guys have watched me play this game. I just... The AI in my game behave weird compared to other people's games. And I've seen sometimes the same in, in your playthroughs. 
Um, I've had some people talk about it just in regards to how the AI race and how they compete. Our, our games all behave differently. Not an ideal start. Let's see if she can run. She is the third favorite. Who are we catching? We are going after Mesh Main with Thompson. Extreme kick. She's got a furlong to go, and she's driving. She has a chance. We need close race. Okay, she's in here. She's in the mix. Can she get the Mother Goose Stakes win? No, she's trying. She's trying. She's trying, and she's just going to get up there maybe for second. Ah, oh, man, I got started a little bit too late. A little bit too late. I certainly had the opportunity to go. Uh, she just doesn't have that drive in the stretch like I want. And granted, she runs better as a closer. That's still a great result for her. They're going to give me a double S on the spurt. I surely think I could have started sooner. Um, but that is a result I can still be happy with because that's a tough field. That's a tough race. And if she can finish second, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Ah, really wish I would have gotten started a bit sooner. I think we would have just had the edge to probably get up there um, by a nose. But again, second place in a, in a race like that is not bad at all for Extreme Kick. Considering I still don't know her most important attributes. Like I'm still racing on what I would consider a relatively green-ish type of horse. So, you know, I, I'm okay with those. Like, I'm not I'm not going to be upset if I don't win that type of race. Others, did I completely mess up? Yes. But that race, no problem. That was tough all the way down to the end. So, uh, good effort there from Extreme Kick. We'll continue to see how she develops and if there's potential for breeding. Moving on to the Grade 1 Grand Prix de Saint Cloud. This is a field of 10 um three-year-olds and up one filly which is joint soldier and she's the favorite the five horse i, I remember her we're the second favorite with marksman uh, 12 furlong so this is a good test for marksman we'll see how he does still trying to see if he's going to be worth breeding and i think his stats alone because of the consistency and he doesn't have like a legitimately bad stat 55 heart is not great you guys know i, I prefer my horses to have like 80 and higher but Again, the rest of his stats are pretty well off. I think that's a sacrifice we might be able to make. And he has a 90 power rating. The dude is super strong. So I think that's a sacrifice, again, we can take. He does have bears, though. He inherits that from Fairy Singer. I like Marksman, though. I still do. But, you know, he's four years old, still waiting to see how he uh, pans out. If he can win this race, I think he makes a good case for himself. Yeah, I think he'll make a good case. But, again, still kind of in the process of figuring out some of our horses. And, again, we're going to cut down on breeding. Um, I don't know if, I think I'm, I'll be breeding next year with some of the new horses we retired. Um, but I, the most I can do every other year is like four. Still want to cut down on our horses. I'm trying to get the roster size to like 15 tops. I can work with 15 horses, not to mention we can progress pretty quickly. If I'm racing with 20 or more, you see how long it's taking me just to get through this year. Like it's taking too long. I, I really want to progress. So, got to cut down on the horses to make up for that. Because, again, I don't play this game as often as some other people, so I just don't have the time to make that progress. So, I need to shorten the amount of horses I work with, which is what I want to do anyways. So, we're off and running here with Marksman in the Grand Prix de St. Cloud. And, like I said, we're looking for the five-horse joint soldier. And she is a dandy of a filly, so we got to watch out for her. But Marksman should be fine. I think he's coming into his own now that he's four years old. And I always bring it up every time I race on him. I just... I almost gave up on this guy. It turns out I just needed a little bit more patience, you know. <laughs> but better late than never. That's always my motto. Things may not always work out for you is exactly when you want it to. What's more important is that it works out when you need it to actually work out. If you're just being impatient, well, you just need to, like, be patient and wait, you know. I had to learn that as a kid growing up. You know, there were things I did not care to do. I always had to get dragged to certain things I hated going to. But I realized I'm not going to be doing this forever. So let me just be patient. And once I'm older, I can do what I want. And look, I'm older now and I don't have to do those things anymore. And I've developed a sense of patience that I think has helped me in various aspects of my life. So just a reminder, man, if you feel yourself not being patient with something, you really just got to take a breath. You know, <laughs> you really do. Sometimes we have to remember, like, life is always moving. Sometimes it's okay to, 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 to stop, take a pause, and be like, hey, I just need to take a second. Okay. It's very important. I'm telling you, it's very important. Like, there's science behind that. It's not placebo. It's not anything. Sometimes you just need to take a break and slow yourself down, man. Or you'll go crazy. I don't like to feel like that. So, here we go. Oh, I don't even know if the rail is open, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, it is. Wow. It is open. All right, let's go, Marksman. Take off, buddy. Take off. 
Joint Soldier, she's still there on the outside, but Marks, ah, uh, she beating us? Ah, oh, she is poking her nose ahead, but Marksman has the stamina. Come on, Marksman, furlong left to go. What a race. Joint Soldier, she's still there. She's ahead. Does she have better stamina? No, Marksman's got the endurance. He can pull through. Come on, Marksman. Come on, buddy. He's going to do it. What a guy. What a win. Oh, man. Thank goodness we had that inside trip. And it's not even, it, it's, it's no discussion. Marksman just gets there in the end to win the Grade 1 Grand Prix de, de St. Cloud. Three close races, right? Except for the Angel Hearts one. I mean, that was close, but he, he won that comfortably by at least two lanes. Last two were pretty much within half a length. What a win. And this is, that's what I meant earlier. Like, I almost gave up on this guy. 12 furlongs is not an easy feat. You, you couldn't take a sprinter and run that type of race unless they're like your best double S elite horse, right? You know, you need a long distance horse. We beat Joint Soldier. We beat Major Show. Uh, runaway Sprinter. Perfect runner. Some decent horses. Uh, wow. <laughs> what a run there for Marksman. Great, great, great victory. Another one at 12. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That is a good quality win that, that I really wanted for that guy. Um, is that his first grade one? That might have been his first grade one. I don't have any grade ones in my notes for him. So, um, wow. <laughs> it's a good three-day meet there. Two wins out of three. Should have won with Extreme Kick, but, you know, hats off to the horse that won in that race. That was close. But great, great result there from Marksman. Super happy about that result. We will take it. Let's go, baby. There we go. All right, so let's look at the first half classifications. As we approach halfway through the year, Revenge ends up hitting the 128 number for the three rolls on the turf. That's fantastic. Could scroll further down. Cafe Bronco hits a 116, which uh, I'll check that stuff later. I just kind of want to see who's right now the top 10 on this initial sheet. So we'll go through that uh, here very shortly. All right. So for the three year old dirt category, of course, Green Crystal dominating with a 138 rating for the mid and the long. Whispering Gold, he's up there with a 130, and again, a Re Revenge up there for the 128. So Revenge is up there for Dirt and Turf. I love it. That's why I look for sires that have that flexibility and or broodmares. I, I like being able to run on either surface with some really good horses. Four-year-old Turf, Eastern Knife, 138 for the long. Shocker. East Side Band, 137 for the long. Again, Shocker. Lockwood, 128 for the mile, and a 122 for the mid, so... We have a horse up here in basically every category, which is sweet, except for this four-year-old dirt category. Nobody's up here. A heavy fantasy leading, then perfect time, clear time, spinning post, flaring risk, so on and so forth. Rapid Blade, she's down there at a 120. That's not bad. Rapid Blade, still my project horse. I'm hoping we can dig in a little bit more. Little Mai, she's down there with a 117. Oh, we're probably not catching these horses at the top. I think they're better than Rapid Blade. Maybe Little Mai, not sure. But Little Mai is technically our, my fifth best horse overall uh, you can check those rankings on the website as well if you want to see who my top five horses are in this game all right well it's good to know we are making good progress and we are where we should be so angel hearts need to get you into a race um let's see what's the next race on the four-year-old uh, path um it's the only thing about following the paths, like it just, I feel like it's so time consuming and I don't want to like waste time doing that every episode. Like I put my horses in races that are ideal for them based off of their distance. And if they win the awards, they win the awards. I don't think I have to really obsess over it. You know what I mean? So, you know what? Let me just find a, um, let's find a 11 furlong race for this guy. If we can, ideally between 10 and 12 furlongs, I should say. So that's kind of the path that he's on, so... No GWS, I don't really want to put him in that. Dublin Stakes at 14? I don't think he has the stamina for that, honestly. Uh, Saturn Stakes, that's much more up his alley. We'll run him in September for the Saturn Stakes. Alright, so that's what you'll be doing, Angel Hearts. Next up will be Extreme Kick. So she finished second at the Mother Goose Stakes. Trying to obviously... Um, Finally, they tell me your stamina and your power. So your power is good. Your stamina is middle of the road, which is fine. You're a dirt horse. I don't think you need insane stamina for that. Good power, good heart. Her speed... 
I'd be surprised if she was higher than like a 75. She doesn't really feel extremely fast. But granted, I know I need to run her further towards the back to get that, that real explosiveness. But again, that last race, I had to drop her back. I don't know if that would have... I think we would have finished worse than second. I do. I just feel like the field was too spread apart. I, I had to keep her where I where I had her. I thought that was okay. Um. So, yeah. You, you just need dirt wins. She's S ranked. She should... Like, she's won a grade one. I've only raced her eight times. She's finished in the top three, six of her eight times. So, she's not really, like, overachieving or anything close to that. She's kind of middle of the road right now. And how long was that race? That race was only nine furlongs. I wonder if she's better. What's her distance again? They're not telling me. Oh, that's annoying. She might be a sprinter. I don't know if I've ran her really short. I probably should look for that. Um, yeah, I need to look for a sprinting grade one. Lead stakes or lead sprint stakes. Yeah, let's try you at five. Don't know if that'll suit you, but I mean, I, I feel like I've ran her at longer distances for the most part. I, let's drop her to five and see if that'll help the game tell us what her actual distance is. It would be nice to know. I, I really wish they didn't have that be a mechanic in this game. I talk about it quite a bit, but... Anyways, Marksman, great victory. Your power rating goes from a 90 to a 91. You're pretty much at your peak right now, and you shouldn't have a major drop-off. So that's his first. that was his first grade one as well. So, uh, 16 lifetime starts for this guy, and he's finishing the top three. 11 out of 16 times. Not bad. He's on a winning streak. Let me raise it up by one with you in a row. Just three. Okay. Was your first grade one this year? No. Must have won it out last year. Oh, no. That was his first grade one. I just literally said it. Okay. Pay attention. Um. So, yeah. I... He's, he's really doing well at these longer distances. Um... So, I'll keep him on that trajectory, and if he can win a grade one, why not, right? I should keep him on that type of um, path. And then, where's the Dublin long, right? That was 14. Can we run that, though? Yeah, that's in September, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, um, impost might be too much. I, I don't care where we're going to do it. I mean, what else do they want him to run? He's a 9 to 14. Like, there's not a lot of races lower than 10 furlongs during that time period anyways. If somebody's going to run 14, it's literally him because his chart says 14. All right, so those three races are set. Um, we have a grade one coming up, which is the grade one Japan Dirt Derby with Green Crystal. We should win this. I don't suspect. Like, who's going to give us a, a, a challenge? Stable Chime? Okay, maybe. Yeah, Stable Chime is a good horse. Better power. We have the Endurance slightly, and they have the better heart rating. Okay. Fair enough. Could be a closer race than I anticipate but that's okay well we're, we're, oh i forgot <laughs> forgot the most important thing six new two-year-olds hitting the track for the first time and we're gonna acquire them all and i will do tack uh not in this episode because you guys know how time consuming that is i will have that set up for the next episode but if you guys see any of these names that you recognize as yours um your horses let me know the tack colors in the comment section or in the in the discord if you don't i'm obviously going to customize them just based off of whatever i guess i feel so um yeah let's go ahead just show you guys um again his stats uh big friday gentle house gentle house doesn't peak gentle house doesn't have a long growth type so 25k did you inherit a long growth type by chance 25k kind of tells me you're not gonna be great until later but no western tiger peter that's strange. Okay, not not gonna stress it. Um, yeah, I'll I'll put them in whatever race the AI suggests. I'm not gonna question it. Next on the list, Falling Stars, two-year-old Colt by Fairy Singer out of Galaxy Star. Now you should have a mid type of growth type. Okay. Where do they want you? you in this open then that's fine okay there's like stars next up going for gold by golden boy out of real happy one of golden boy's last offspring to hit the track he has one more on the way which i think is still a yearling um no idea what to expect from this horse but 101k i'm really shocked about that 
then again, they've done this for with all of Golden Boy's foals, and like we've had, I, I've had like six or seven of them, and I swear only one or two have actually been legitimately strong horses. Now, full pedigree could help, and maybe that's why. You see the pedigree, right? You look on his father's side, Honest Pegasus, which was my custom horse, Lee's Gold, Western Tiger, and B. All of us know those two horses, right? The mother's side, Vivid Legend and Pink Gemstone. Most of us that have been here for years remember good Pink Gemstone. Art to Crop and Nightbreeze. He has a solid, solid, solid pedigree. Probably one of my most complete pedigrees for a horse. He's a true fourth generation star. I hope, or she's, excuse me, I hope you're worth the money. And and the 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 everything else, the accolades that they're trying to say, oh yeah, this horse is expensive. This horse should have good stats, has a good pedigree, whatever. Uh, yeah, I, ho I certainly hope you're worth it. Um, but I guess time will tell. I don't know why I was calling her a cult. I think I was, I was looking at um, Golden Boy's name. I was thinking about him. Next, Heart of Stone, two-year-old filly. Buy Gentle House out of Chasing Hearts. Should be fantastic. These are two great horses I've received nothing but good quality horses from and, and, and offspring. So, yeah, I really don't have any doubts about uh, Heart of Stone. Where do they want you? That's fine. So you'll be racing today. Wow. Um, Heart of Stone. Abigail, I think this is your horse. Let me know what tack you want. We'll be running these horses pretty much just by their default looks until the tack is put on them. I forgot. This class is all pretty much all fillies except for the two colts. So four fillies, two colts, if I'm not mistaken. Make sure I have that done in my notes properly. I think so. Um, anyways, Phoenix Rising, two-year-old filly. Buy Gentle House out of Black Ruby. She should be strong. That's what I'm hoping. But again, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. So when do they want you to go? Uh, seven and a half in August. I, I wasn't trying to go to that race. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. So there's Phoenix Rising. And last but not least, you made me promises. But I can't fit the whole name of the song there. Or at least the quote of the song. Because the song is not actually named that. But you guys get the point. Shout out to my 80s uh, music heads, technically. I mean, it's it's an 80s vibe, not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, anyways, this filly is out of Free Fear by Gentle House. Kind of like the Black Ruby situation. Don't know what to expect. She should be strong because Gentle House hasn't really failed me so far as a sire. So, um, yeah, not a super expensive class this year of horses, which I'm okay with because let's be honest. These horses, they're either going to be great for breeding or they're not. And if they're not going to really work out for breeding, then we'll race them a couple of times and then probably let them go. That's kind of how I'm treating horses now that I get. We keep the really strong ones and the really, really unique ones that will help us for breeding. But if it's just a middle of the road horse that can only win maybe three or six grade ones, probably not keeping them around. Because that's what I did the last two years. And that's how I got stuck with having over 28 horses, which is way, way, way too much for me in this game, personally. Um... So yeah, uh, is anybody racing? Oh, I thought, yeah, never mind. I thought uh, the two-year-old was starting today. Harder. So no, never mind. These are the last two races, which I will have to do at the end of the episode. But um, yeah, we should be all good to go now. Let me do, get a quick save. And we'll continue to proceed on. So again, uh, I'm just, I'm staying flexible. I've realized as I play this game, sometimes I get, I get my hopes up. Too, too many times for certain horses and sometimes they pan out the way I want other times they don't I'm realizing it's better just to kind of be in flow and just see how you feel with them on track see how they run see what their stats are once they're revealed to us and then kind of start to make my judgments but I'm too quick to kind of jump the gun on um, you know like assuming a horse is going to be insane if you know I don't really know certain horses yes we can kind of look at them and tell like they should be as strong as we expect them to be. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to tailor my expectations, especially with some of these, because I really don't know. Um, I don't know with some of these uh, two-year-olds how they're going to turn out, but obviously we'll, we'll get to that point uh, at the end. Okay. Green Crystal up in the Japan Dirt Derby, the favorite by about a buck fifty. So we shouldn't have too many problems. Stable Chime's a good horse, so I'm not taking anything away from that horse. But Green Crystal, respectfully, is better, I think, at, at his peak. He's on the downhill slope now. The only categories he's lacking in compared to Stable Chime is the power and the heart. The heart isn't great at all, so I got to make sure I get this guy going at the right time. 
But um, I can run as a Proceeder. Whoever is going to be the leader, I don't mind chasing them because Green Crystal is strong enough to run with them for the most part. So 10 furlongs on the dirt here in Tokyo. We'll see how this goes. Should get the win. We are the favorite, like I said, by quite a margin. Ooh, wet conditions. Racing in the slop here. Muddy conditions for the Japan Dirt Derby. Green Crystal ready to rock and roll. Sedate Ruler still has the record here. That guy has not been in my game, and I haven't raced with him in almost what feels like 15 in-game years, and crazy to think he still has the record here. Like, how have I... It just goes to show you the lack of quality dirt horses I've had in this playthrough. Honestly. Which is partly my own fault, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm there now. We're finally getting the dirt horses I want. We're going to start to, so... Uh, later than usual, but as I always say, better late than never. Better late than never, man. Alright, Stable Chime, where are you? You run towards the back? You're in that mid-pack. Well, that benefits me if you're going to run way back there. So I just need to make sure I keep up with the pace here. Yep, cruise control for green crystal. I want to make sure we are right in striking range of uh, the leader here when it's time to kick it up heading into turn four. Stable chime, just making sure, okay. We're about two lanes, three lanes off, maybe four at this point. Yep, green crystal's comfortable. Should be a relatively easy win. I, this is what this guy's been doing. Some of you, I think I've worked with Green Crystal, correct? Let me know if you have in the comments section or the Discord. I'm pretty sure I saw somebody talking about him recently. Yep. Very nice, very nice. Ah, don't move over too much, okay? Don't really have to do anything. Don't have to do anything. Here we go. Here we go. Rebo? No Rebo. Did I go too soon? Don't let Stable Chime catch you, buddy. I may have went too soon. Oh, Stable Chime's on a tear. Come on, Green Crystal. You got to hold in there, buddy. You got to hold in. You got to hold in. You got to, got to, got to, got to hold in. Just got it. Oh, I went way too soon. Something told me I was going to do that, and I still ended up doing it anyway. So, oh, man. Way too close. Way, way, way too close. That's when it actually benefits you to kind of run as a closer and save ground. I almost burned ourselves out. Burned ourselves out there. But... We did it. We got the win still. <laughs> barely. Uh, barely, barely, barely. Um, so that's another grade one win there. Marksman. Uh, let me make sure I have this in my notes properly. Okay. So Green Crystal, that is his fourth grade one, if I'm not mistaken. Just won by a length. Naka was on an absolute tear trying to catch us. 10 furlong dirt win there. So that's four for Green Crystal. So we are close to that dirt champ title. Very close. But he's only three years old, so we still have plenty of time to go. Take the win, man. We'll take the win, ugly or not. So let's get you in another grade one, Green Crystal, because I made that a little bit too close. You should have four. Yep, four grade one, seven lifetime starts, five wins out of those seven starts. So I haven't really dropped too many races with him, fortunately. So that's a good sign. Mr. Crystal. Let's see what we can find for you. Uh, any... I can't... Oh, Osaka Derby? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that in September. That's perfect. All right. Get him in the Osaka. That'll be his fifth grade one. Hopefully we can add that. All right. We got two races coming up today. A grade three Star Festival Handicap featuring Little Mai. And we have the grade one Long Beach Cup, which I'll show you those real race names in a minute. Here with, I believe, Rapid Blade. She's going for a dirt and yearly award as well. So, uh, I have nobody in the GWS sprint. Seriously. Then again, I don't really have like a hardcore sprinter in this entire group. Nobody is like, who's the fastest horse I currently have that I can see? You know, you, like you're looking at the speed. There's nobody's popped out. The fastest horse, Green Crystal, ironically. Wow. But he's not a turf horse, so I can't do that. With, I mean, I shouldn't do that with him anyway. Green Crystal and then Precious Saint, go figure. Yeah, I don't really have like insane. I don't really have like legitimate sprinters in this class of horses, so that's a little bit. I need to work on that. <laughs> All right, no big deal. Let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. So four races down and another seven to come. 
in this episode. So this video obviously going to go over an hour, but you guys, I think, enjoy that more anyways. Star Festival Handicap. This is the real life Star Festival Handicap. Okay. <laughs> Little Mai's up here. Uh, it's a field of 14. Running 10 furlongs on Zetef. Yeah, she's the fifth favorite, as I pretty much expected. She's on the decline anyways, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, she's peaked. She peaked two years ago, but she's still competitive. Um, definitely will use her for breeding. She's still a top five ranked horse of mine in regards to all the horses I have, you know, racing. She, she's top five out of that group. So it may not look like it statistically, but, but she did very well. And to think I still don't know her leg type, that's how, like, my horses are turning out from Formal Opera because he can essentially run anywhere. If you haven't worked with him, his leg type position in this game, every triangle is shaded, so he can run anywhere. But she has turf dirt okay, which is great. By Moon Trapper, I mean, out of Moon Trapper as well. You guys know how much I love my my old girl Moon Trapper. So, um, yeah, we, we have a chance, but it's a grade three. I, she's on the decline. I'm just racing her to race her. Don't know if I'm going to retire her yet. I, I got to figure out the breeding situation. I really do. I know I want to obviously do less of it, and I want to skip every other year, but... I don't know what I'm doing for next year. I think I have to do something next year. Um, yeah, I, I just, I'll have to figure it out. So I'm gonna keep her in these type of lower state graded races until she's ready to be retired. And I'm gonna run her towards the back here because I'd rather not run her towards the front. She doesn't have the stamina to do that as much anymore anyways. You look familiar, are you my horse? Probably not. I've lost a couple. Go for Cupid? Yeah, I thought... Oh, you're not a horse of mine, so never mind. Alright, no big deal. So we'll see how this race turns out. Can't believe it's a... Uh, what, Eric? The Kentucky Derby. I don't know what I was going to call it. The Lesson Duppy Bub... What? The Buppy Burby? The Kentucky Derby. Already, from the time of this video, basically... Seven weeks away? Well, more eight, like eight weeks, but it'll be seven. Um, I feel like I just watched the Derby last year, you know? It just, it's amazing sometimes how fast life can really go by when, you know, you're just busy doing things. It's just like, wow. It's already about to be that time, but I'm excited. My local track, uh, Thistledown, is opening in five weeks. So, of course, I'll be back there. Got to get going, got to get going. Talking about the Kentucky Derby and forgetting I'm actually in a race. <laughs> All right, little Mike, come on. We just need a top five finish. I'm not expecting to win. Um, she's running pretty well here. She's got a good run. Furlong left to go. Little Mai still kicking. Still kicking. Great run here. Will she get up there for the win? No. But I think she'll still finish in the top five. And she finishes exactly fifth? Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah, she's, that's probably the best I can get out of her at this point in her career. And I definitely started late, so that could have been better. They'll give me, like, what, a B or a C for that? Yeah, B. Yep, slow start, pace judge, not good, position wasn't great. Well, you do, you know, you guys haven't told me where she wants to run. I've been guessing her entire career, and she's five years old. So, like, you know, <laughs> help me out here, right? Uh, she finished where she was supposed to. That's fine. I'm not even upset about that. She's achieved what she's needed to achieve. We move on to the Santa Anita Gold Cup here with Rapid Blade. It's a field of 10. Mixed field. Colts, older horses. Philly Mare running 10 furlongs on Zedet. Eighth place expected finish here for Rapid Blade. That's, that's really disappointing. Uh, but... Like, our odds aren't that crazy far apart from the horses that are supposed to finish ahead of us. It's really kind of a wide-open race. Now, Happy World's the heavy favorite, almost by a whole $3. So I guess we're probably not catching that horse, but we'll see. Ah, that's why. She's really, I always forget, turf is her preference. But I'm trying her out on the dirt. I want to see if this works out for her. She reminds me a lot of Marksman, which is how Butterfly Effect... Um, the horses that come from her are turning out. Consistent stats all the way on the left side. Really good power rating on the right. And I'm not mad at that. That's a good base and foundation to work from. Memorial quality. 35 power rating. 53 heart. 64 stamina is okay. You're at your peak. So is Rapid Blade. Uh, 
Okay, you are actually a dirt horse. That's like the only advantage you have over us. Um, happy world. 90 speed. Beautiful filly. 62 power, 59 heart, 65 stam. So middle of the road. Uh, she's at her peak. Great dirt horse. Close race, not good. Aha! So we just need to look her in the eyes and she'll call it quits and want to... Well, I can't say, um, what's the saying? Um, take your ball and run home. Uh, take her hooves, take her carrots and run home. <laughs> Is that a good one? No, probably not. Okay. Um, anyways, need to get this win here with Rapid Blade. I uh, really want her to be successful. Beautiful day here in Santa Anita. Shulka. It's usually always pretty nice days in Santa Anita. Oh, man. Well, yeah. Let, let's get this going, my girl. She's going again for a dirt uh, champ award, or at least a dirt yearly award, either or. Homo Opera sells the record here. Let's make it happen, my girl. Now, we gotta control the pace. I hope nobody wants to run 25,000 lanes ahead of the field, but knowing my luck with Rapid Blade, that's probably what I'm gonna get in this race. I'd be shocked. Oh, I feel it already. It's gonna be a hot pace. I feel it already. I feel it already. I just need to establish the lead, settle her down, and, uh, okay, who is this keeping up with me? Fine show. Nope, stop it, stop it. You, you have no chance today. I mean, you're supposed to finish one place worse than me, but, like, come on, stop it, go back. All right, settle down now. I gotta keep her in front. She does rapid blade this horse. She does not like to be in second at all. Like if I don't have her in first place, her race is kind of ruined. So she's one of those front runners that's very stubborn about being in the front. Sorry about your gray back there, and not my problem. You can go around. All right, mid normal cruising pace. This is what I want. This is this is what I ideally want for rapid blade. I feel like I never get trips like this ever. There's always some horse trying to race us to the. To the to you know the two furlong marker well not the two furlong the four furlong marker it's just like this race goes another four furlongs after that like cut it out okay get her on the move slightly let's go let's go ah, a little bit of a late start a little bit of a late start but she has a good run we are in the front we can take this away she does get last corner leader our oh, rapid blades about to run away with this isn't she she has a chance Oh, here comes the rest of the field. Come on, Rapid Blade. You're not even supposed to win today, my girl. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, no. Did she? Ah, oh, just got nabbed. Oh, was that fine show that just got us? What an effort. She was supposed to finish eighth, people. Happy world, I mean. She was supposed to finish eighth. <laughs> I thought she was going to finish in the money. I didn't expect. I mean, like, she, she can run on the dirt. She has it in her pedigree. They were treating her as, as if she was strictly a turf-based horse only. This game is so weird with that. I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know the algorithm and how they calculate that out. It doesn't always make sense. Don't defend it. It doesn't always make sense. That's an, that's a great result. We were supposed to finish nowhere near that field. She finishes eighth in, in the uh, Santa Anita Gold Cup, or excuse me, second, when she was supposed to finish eighth. I almost run a perfect race with her. And that was because the pace was actually what I wanted it to be. Had... Um, fine show or whoever the horse was that was running with us at the front. Had they have pushed that pace faster, that could have turned out night and day different. Great, great effort there from Rapid Blade. Great effort. Just stop. Can't do anything with the Charging Happy World. I mean, she has 90 speed for a reason. So the GWS series update here. Final movie. Staley show tied for first. Lockwood sitting there in third. So that's good. Technically second place with six points. The Turf Storm Out. Second place with six um sparky nova that, that's a really good horse she's gonna be hard to beat but, but we'll see what we can do and the dirt rapid blade i forgot that was a gws dirt race i totally forgot to mention that uh, she's sitting at fourth green crystal on the board as well look at all these horses we're running against i have i not said this like every year like the last three years have been non-stop competitive horses and fields that i'm running against some of the best horses domestically here in the game final movie stately show those are great horses um silver bird all the horses technically on these lists are really good quality double S type of horses. I mean, look at this dirt competition. Happy World, Big Show, Heavy Fantasy, Perfect Time, Clear Time, Spinning Post. It's 
So we are really running against some top notch horses and I'm, I'm all for it. So four, I haven't won a single race in the GWS. Four second place finishes. I'm there. I'm right on the line. We'll get that win soon. All right. So Little Mai and Rapid Blade. Good stuff. Little Mai. Again, I'm just going to continue to run you into um, grade threes or twos until it's time to retire you for breeding at some point. Um, you want to run on the uh, dirt. Now they tell me your minimum distance, which is nine furlongs. That's hilarious. <laughs> now that you're basically done with your legitimate competitive racing career, now they want to tell me, oh, yeah, by the way, she runs nice. Like, go. Mm. I'm not going to say it. I have to keep this PG. But, yeah, definitely some some profanity there because that, that's ridiculous. I hate that the game does that. I really do. It's such a stupid thing. I don't Say it all the time. I wish I could talk to somebody that worked at Tacmo and be like, what were you guys thinking when, when you made this a thing? But like, it's really stupid. Anyways, I will just get her in a grade three dirt race. That's pretty much all I'm going to do with her. And Rapid Blade. Not doing well. That was a heck of an effort, man. She ran her heart out. She really did. Yeah, just trying to build some consistency with her. But... Um, Good thing is, she, I should still be able to run her relatively competitively until she's seven. Can I say that in the same sentence? I can still run her competitively. That sounds better, until she's seven. Um, give you the layoff you need. You don't actually need that much of a layoff. Thought she was going to have to wait till like November. She'll be good in September. Okay, well. She'll be good in August. What's your health rating? 66. That's not like awesome, but okay. I'm surprised she recovers that quick from a 66 health rating. Usually when I have horses with a rating like that, it still takes them like three months if they're not in good condition. Um, yeah, I want to keep you on this dirt campaign. She can't win her next grade one. Well, first stakes. I mean, she's not the strongest horse to be running in this race, but I'll take the chance. If she doesn't win it and doesn't have enough points to stay competitive in the uh, GWS Dirt Championship, then I'll drop her out to domestic dirt grade ones. All right, people, we have six races down, four more, well, five more to go. Uh, Irish Hill is going to be up next in an open, followed by uh, Cafe Bronco and Naked Chariot in two grade three. So dropping in class a little bit here for this stretch of uh, races. Well, you better with me. No, 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 no. I wish you could turn that off. I hate that that has to pop up every now and then. Like, just, no, I'm not doing it. I didn't like it when I used to do it in my earlier playthrough in this game. And I'm, I, I just think it's a big waste of time. Big handicap here for Irish Hill compared to some of the other horses in the fetch. It's a mixed field. Some horses coming in with 121 jockey weight, 116, 123, 108, 112. Like, what is this about? Anyways, um... Yeah, expected to finish 7th. Irish Hill is a uh, project horse I would like to do some experimental breeding with. His stats don't look great. That's not the point. It's the leg type that I like. It's the distance for the dirt that I like. And it's these abilities. Flats Master. I don't have any horses with that. Fast Pace, okay. Free Enclosure. If I could get those abilities on a really, really, really good horse, that would be a blast. But... You know how that goes. Um, I either succeed with these experimental breedings or I fail, but that's kind of the, that's the joy in it for me. I know sometimes people don't understand why I will take such bad horses and try to make something work with them because it's, it's like how, I, it's how I like to enjoy the game, man. Uh, yeah, I like to experiment. Like I, I talk about it all the time. I couldn't play this game just winning all the time and just having the best horses all the time. Like I it's, it's not a challenge, man. I need a challenge. I need a challenge in some way. It doesn't mean I intentionally want to make things so hard that I can't ever succeed. No, I just want to. F I, I like being able to figure things out, going different routes, trying out different methods. There's usually more than one way to have success. I Like people will tell you, you can only have success in one narrow minded way. And th that's just not true. You look at plenty of successful people in life. There are people that have achieved the same levels of success going different routes. That's how I treat my gaming. So yeah, it does. It, it annoys me when people like are like, oh, that's a waste of time. I'm like, it might be a waste of time, but I'll learn something in the process. And I always learn from my failures. I don't think people take that seriously enough. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from your failures. See what you can do. What's with the stamina, bro? OMG. 
<laughs> OMG, this stamina is awful. Do we have a chance? We have to finish better than 7th. I don't think it's happening today. No way. I mean, this horse can run anywhere. Oh, you called it a day, huh, Irish? That's it. That's it. <sighs> fair play. Fair play. That doesn't help my case when I say I want to use him for breeding. <laughs> but it's all good. We, we have great horses. If it doesn't work out with him, then that's one breeding pair I don't end up using. That's the worst that can happen. That's the way I look at breeding in this game. People treat it as if, if you, like, if you experiment with, like, a set of horses and they don't work out, it's, like, you don't have to keep that horse. You don't have to race that horse beyond a couple of races and... You still keep your amazing horses, your amazing double S and elite horses that you have. You're not really losing out on anything. I just, I don't get it. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing things, and I'm not like saying this in a, in a mean or derogatory way. Just people that play this game sometimes, I'm no very quirky. We all are. I have my own quirks, right? So that's fine. I, I guess I should say we're all quirky with this game because some things I just, I don't understand it. I'm like, what's, what's the worst case scenario if you breed two horses together and it turns out to be a train wreck? You don't use that horse and you move on and you try another breeding pair or you try a different broodmare or sire. That's the worst case scenario, people. Like people treat breeding in this game like it's life or death. I just, I don't understand it. It's, it's weird to me, genuinely. Not judging, I just don't legitimately get, like, the, the anxiety behind it. I don't. <laughs> Another grade three here. This is the um, Leopard Stakes here with Cafe Bronco. Um, second favorite. Expected uh, to finish, hopefully, in this race, but I want to win. Uh, Cafe, looking pretty strong here. He doesn't really have a bad stat. Buy Gentle House out of Tigris or Stone. This is the half-brother to Eastside Band, if that makes it easier for some of you trying to understand... Um, the quality of horse we should have here. Cafe Bronco, he has two grade threes, a grade two, and one grade one win at seven furlongs. So uh I don't know why I'm not really putting him in grade ones. He's I think statistically he's strong enough, but yeah, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. But yeah. Gal Razor community is very, very quirky. We we have very interesting ways of approaching this game which to me still makes it unique and cool as a video game i hate video games where everybody just plays it the same way and nobody tries to be different and i'm like so we're all just gonna basically be robots playing this game the same exact way okay that's what floats your boat but i, I like seeing people's uniqueness i like seeing the individuality and in how people approach this game if everybody's just doing the same thing where's the fun in that Really? What's, where's the fun, people? You know? I always try to promote it. You know, I've had people even message me. Oh, I'm scared to put my footage on YouTube because of what people think. You know? Who gives a flying bleep what people think about how good or bad you are in a video game? If you want to upload, just upload. You know? You're going to get people that hate what you do regardless of you being good or not. You know what I mean? Like, it's... You can't please everybody. You can't appease everyone, and you never will. That's so unrealistic to go through life that way. Do it because you enjoy it, not because you care about someone's perception. That, you know, it's just like, that stuff doesn't matter, people. It really, really, really doesn't. I know society will tell you it does. It doesn't. <laughs> now, I am not timing my spurts like I want. I feel like I'm going way too soon. We should be winning this race, hopefully, comfortably. Oh, man. Get there. I didn't even really need to do that last whip. I just, that, that's almost, speaking of quirk, that's a quirky, anxious, anxiety thing I do when I see a horse charging, you know, from behind us like that. And I just want to make sure I get our horse across the line. Made that way closer than it needed to be. Way closer, but uh, it's a great three win for Cafe Bronco, and wins matter, as I always say, so we'll take it. Cruel Weapon was on a charge. Need to settle in a little bit more. I'm having good results. My worst results today was that DNF, I'm going to call it, with Irish Hill. He basically gave up before we even hit the stretch. And uh, Little Maya finished fifth, and that's pretty much where she's at in her career. Every other result, at least today, has been first or second. So consistency, that's all I go for. I don't need to win every single race. If I'm consistent, that's cool. You know, it keeps me motivated. If I'm winning everything all the time, I mean, what 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 do I work on, right? <laughs> what do you work on when you're winning all the time? 
obviously you can, I guess, figure it out, but you have to be honest with yourself. You have to ask yourself, okay, what am I still not 100% great at? None of us are perfect. So no matter how good you think you are at something, you can always improve. No human being is perfect. Not a single one in the history of humanity has there ever been a perfect human being. There's always room for improvement. That keeps you humble, man. It's good. Sometimes people get a big head and then like when they get humble, it, it really messes them up. It's like, keep yourself grounded. You won't go through those. Grade three, leopard stakes here with Naked Chariot. Uh, probably one of my favorite S-ranked dirt horses in Gallup Racer. He's such a blast to work with. Fourth favorite in this field of 14. Five years old. He will not peak until next year, the end of this year, early next year. So his power rating isn't great, but he's a dirt horse. I don't think power is as important on dirt as it is in turf, personally. You can agree to disagree. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I hope Naked Chariot uh, turns out to be good for dirt breeding. Just have to find a really good dirt brew mare, and I think we'll get quality horses from him. Uh, last time I had him, I don't think I don't know if I was even able to retire him for breeding. I don't think he was ever in the in the barn. Bionic Club still has the record here. I set that with him like 30 years ago. I can't believe I haven't broken some records in this game on certain tracks. That really lets you know I still have a lot of work to do, which is why it makes me excited when I come back to this game. I know there's still so much progress I can make, uh, you know, and we can achieve with these horses. And again, I always like to encourage people that are a little intimidated by, like, the kind of pompous people in the community that think being so great at Galbracer translates to anything in reality. I like to remind people that maybe play on a different or easier difficulty. Like, you don't have to be an all-star at this game. I don't care if people tell you, you don't have to be an all-star. If you are, great, good for you. You know, it's good that you've taken the time to, you know, perfect your craft, so to speak. I respect that. But again, from my understanding, none of us are making a living off a of Galp Racer, right? <laughs> like, so how bad or good you do at this game, it, it, it should really just be kept to just the game you know it shouldn't spill over to anywhere else so yeah that's that's just how i feel i like to have those conversations because again i talk about it i get comments and i get messages so you know i like to address things it's not like i'm not going to address certain things but when it comes to like the weird obsession with some things in this game i'm just like i don't get it man i really don't <laughs> I've been playing this game as much as some of you have. I'm 32 years old. I still don't get some of the obsessions that people develop. Uh, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Good push, though. Really good push from Naked Chariot. He's running quite nicely. The wind could be on, but the 10 horse is rolling. The 11 is keeping up with us. Here comes the 7. Here comes the Fury. And we're going to finish just... Oh, I was close. That could be 4th or 5th. Oh, come on, man. It felt good with, like, two furlongs left to go, and then pff, the rest of the field just started to rally. Still hit our goal. Okay, we had a top five. I thought I was supposed to finish top four. Thank goodness. Um, Yeah, I know I can do better, bro. I know I can do better. I am my own worst critic. It doesn't matter what anybody else says about me. I'm always aware of what I can do better. That's why I don't know. I don't understand when people tell me things. It's like, I'm aware of where I need to work on of what I need to work on. I'm extremely, I'm super perceptive of like where I'm at in my skill, how realistic it is. Turner, shut up, shut up, shut up, go away. Shut up, please, thank you. Um, but I'm my own worst critic. Like I've played sports all my life. Nothing any of my coaches could say can make me feel worse about a performance than how I how I judge myself. So like when somebody's telling me, I'm like, bro, that, that's all good and dandy, but like in one ear and out the other, like I'm well aware of where I need to be. I know my skill set or the lack of it, whatever it is, right? And I know where I, I need to put myself um, to really have the success I want to have. So uh, four more races to go. Desert Runner, did I lose you off of that race? No, I was going to say, I shouldn't have lost you. Um, No, you're about to race. No, who am I looking at? Irish Hill. Cafe Bronco and Naked Chariot. Okay, Irish Hill, I still have you. You're at your peak, and that's how you perform? <laughs> You're, I know he's a C-ranked horse for a reason. I might just do breeding with him, like, one time. I don't think I'm, I'm going to do two horses. I'm going to do one. But I got to wait till I can retire him anyway. 
because gosh, your stats are really, really bad. I'm ignoring it. I'm ignoring it. I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a leap of faith. Sometimes you got to do that, man. Can't live life so scared of everything. Sometimes you just got to take that leap and jump. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to take that leap and jump. You can't live in fear. Um, Irish Hill. Okay, I need you in another open allowance something race. I don't know. On the dirt, 7 to 12. We'll see. Uh, Polaris in September. Six furlongs. What was the last distance we ran? That was eight and a half. 49. St oh, that stamina is abysmal, though. Do I really want to take the risk? Am I crazy? Maybe a little bit. That stamina is awful. You guys know I, I, I... Realistically, this horse is an extreme, extreme exception because of his leg type and his abilities. That's it. The stats is clearly not why I'm breeding him. They want you in this handicap race in October. Oh, it's not a handicap. Oh, it is a handicap. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Grade three. You did that in an open and somehow they want you to run in a grade three. <laughs> uh, two wins out of seven starts. I've barely raced this guy. Gosh, he's going to have a horrible eval. I just I don't really know what to do with him. I don't think I can win beyond where we're at. He doesn't have a good heart rating. His stamina stinks. But uh, I was aware of that when I purchased him. So it's, I'm not surprised. I'm just reminding myself, like, yeah, I can't expect too much out of a C-ranked horse, right? <laughs> uh, obviously, Eric. Okay, um, Cafe Bronco. Do you have any great ones? Why do I feel like I'm not, like, doing stuff with you? Okay, I said one great one. So he's winning grade threes at least. Is that all I'm is that all you're worth? <laughs> is that all he's gonna be a solid A A ranked horse? Why is why are you only A ranked with these stats? You should at least be S. I've seen S ranked horses with worse stats. Why are you only A? And I know it depends also on the quality of races you're winning. Nine lifetime starts, six wins, one place, one like what you sh he should be S ranked, at least. At least S ranked. I mean, he's not double S, but okay. All right, bro. Whatever, man. Um, mm, let's see. I don't know what to do with you, Cafe. Can you run 12 furlongs? You have the stamina for it, right? 66. It's not bad. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance. If he can't win this grade one, then I guess I'll stick him to grade twos and grade threes. Like, I'm not... Every horse isn't a grade one horse that I get, and that's fine. Like, keep the grade ones for the grade one horses. Everybody else, run them in grade threes or grade twos. Like, there's really no problem, honestly. Naked Chariot, where are you at? You should be... You're five years old? Yeah. Great effort there, time, Mr. Chariot. Wish we would have finished a little bit higher, but that was a close race. Six lifetime starts, two wins. Haven't really raced him a lot since he was three because I knew he wasn't going to peak until six years old. I'll start ramp ramping up his production not great stats, but again, like, look at him. Look at his stats compared to Cafe Bronco I just showed you. Why are you S-ranked? I talk about it all the time. Some things in this game just don't make sense, no matter how much you try to lie to yourself that it makes sense. Don't do that. If you're trying to make sense of something in this game and it doesn't make sense to you, there's probably a reason for it. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't, man. Like, this game was made by imperfect humans after all. Like, there, there's definitely flaws and errors that had this game been made today, they probably would have corrected, right? Let's be honest. Why are you S-ranked? <laughs> oh, it blows my mind. It really does. Some things in this game just don't make sense, which is part of the appeal to it. It drives me nuts, but, like, I'm, I'm so interested in the lack of... Co just the lack of coherent sense that it makes. I'm just like, okay... Um, but anyways, I run him in the grade two Sapporo, and that'll be it. So we have, or Sapporo, however you say it. Um, so four more races. Two-year-olds making their debuts here. Um, Heart of Stone in the open. I need to type this. No idea what this filly's going to do. Hopefully she uh, she surprises us. Um, I wrote her name, Heart of Stone. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> There she is. I just wanted to show you guys what she was looking like. Um, again, she is out of Chasing Hearts by Gentle uh, House. So this is the open Lavender. And then we'll have uh, You Made Me Promises, two-year-old filly by Gentle House at a Free Fear. So half siblings, half, sibling, half sisters. 
about to race on the track for the first time for us. And this is You Made Me Promises and the Marigold. Let's go ahead and finish off this episode. Um, Tanaka, dude, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, Tanaka. Stop it, stop it. I don't care if you're upset. I told you this every time. I'm not racing you, bro. It's just not happening, man. Just got to learn to accept it is what it is, brother. That's life. Can't control everything all the time. Heart of Stone, again, up in this open six for a long sprint. Fourth favorite, so not bad. I think she's going to have an early growth type. Most gentle house foals should. Top five goal. Uh, she's probably a proceeder, but this is, this is part of the... Um, <laughs> The figuring out process of new two-year-olds, you don't really know where they want to be 100%. You could assume something, and then it turns out they don't want to be in the position you thought. So I realize it's just better just to take a guess, try to put them there. Usually, I don't think you can go wrong by running your horse in the middle. Why run a horse all the way in the front if you don't know that's where they want to be? That could ruin their race. Same for running them all the way in last place. My mindset is just put them in the middle somewhere. The game will kind of tell you if you're close or not. And I know it doesn't sound like that would make sense, but that's just what I try to do. So we'll see. She has a seven, so I figure I think she's a proceeder. Gentle house proceeder, chasing hearts proceeder. Pretty sure. But again, that doesn't always mean your horse will turn out the same way. Two sevens. Okay. I'm gonna need y'all to move here, please. Thank ya. Move. 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 Ah. Cannot get the gap. Could not get the spacing because everybody wants to run as if we're still in the gate. She has grit. That's fantastic. Let's go, my girl. I know you're not supposed to win today, but you have a chance. She's got a really good push. We got to go catch that three horse. Who is that? That is Pacific Quest. Come on, Heart of Stone. She's clearly second best, and that's not bad for debut. Doesn't break her maiden, but that, that that's, that's a good sign. That's a sign of good things to come for Heart of Stone. No surprise there. She comes from great great blood so that is a good result i can walk away pretty happy with that considering we're supposed to finish fourth and she clears second place or the horse in third place by three lanes i think that's a pretty good debut there um and cook is happy remember she used to hate my guts she used to hate me and she's like yeah that's what i expected continue in this fashion thank you you understand as long as you keep it level with me like we can go somewhere I don't think I'm that unreasonable. I really don't. I try to, I try to, I do, I genuinely try my best to be reasonable in most cases. But sometimes people really just try you in certain ways. You know what I mean? Like people, I hate passive aggressiveness. I hate it, hate it, hate it. You know, I hate passive aggressiveness. It's like, don't do that with me and like we're cool. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I, 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 it's so easy to know when someone's being passive aggressive with you. It's a real big pet peeve of mine because it's kind of a coward's way of addressing an issue. You're not really being upfront about something. You're trying to like, you know what I mean? You're trying to slide it under the table on a note instead of just saying it out loud. Don't do that. Just be honest. You made me promises to your old up here. Um, are these the last? No. Three more races or two more races after this. Sixth favorite, not bad. We have a chance. As long as they say we're gonna finish, we have a chance to finish like in the top five, top six. That that's manageable. And again, she's the half sibling to Heart of Stone that we just ran with. Different mother, different broodmare here. Free fear. Don't really know what to expect, but we'll see. Hope you turn out good. You made me promises. It's one of my favorite recent songs. I actually have not listened to that song in months. Why am I lying? <laughs> <laughs> just weird i usually always listen to it not like any of you ask i'm just sharing anyways <laughs> we're off and running um she should also be a proceeder something like that uh, gentle house is the only reason i know this but i could be wrong we'll see yeah we'll see man all right i did not even put in that result there with heart of stone yeah second place on debut is not bad at all especially when we were supposed to finish fourth so, all right, two sevens. Shocker, gentle house horses actually seem to be mild mannered and, you know, good to work with. Don't drift, you're drifting a little bit too much, my girl, sorry. Last corner leader, that's good. Stay off the whip for a little bit. Now we'll go. She's supposed to finish sixth. Can you fight? What? What? What's your heart? 
What's your heart? Stay in there, stay in there, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. There's Stretch Burst. Okay, she does have an answer. She's not going to win, but second place on debut for both of the two-year-olds. I'm not mad at that, man. That's that's a good sign of things to come. I don't know if they're going to be East Side Band quality type of horses. I don't really think so, but they could be they could be in the ballpark. I don't think they'll be as good as her. But again, second place for those two horses. Hopefully next time out we actually break our maiden, especially if they reveal a, like, a couple more things to me. Um, but yeah, not bad at all for you. Maybe promises there. Best speed, quick position, and fast spurt. Um, yeah, I'm always aiming higher, Riviera. Shut up. I know. Like, second place is good for a horse that was supposed to finish sixth. Like, come on. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't think I could ever be that person that would, like, talk negatively about my horse because they didn't finish somewhere in some, in like, in some aspects. Like, if they were supposed to finish sixth, but they finished second, I couldn't be that person that was, like, disappointed with that. There are real human beings that end up, you know, mad about that stuff. Well, I'd just be happy your horse did well, man. Without them, you wouldn't probably be making the money you're making. So, like, don't, don't, don't treat it like you're entitled to that, you know? Desert Runner's up in this grade three. This is the grade three Fukushima Kinen. Hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> um, Project Horse as well. The distance, right? 11 to 18 furlongs. The longest endurance horse I have. Um, late growth type as well, which is fantastic. So I just need to pair him with a really good brew mare. 77 stamina, good heart, and good power. I don't. We don't need the speed. We'll improve it. Likes pack and close race, okay. We are the favorite. Hopefully shouldn't have too much of a problem here. Second to last race, and we'll be finishing with a grade one, which will be the Diamond Cup, a.k.a. the King George the Sixth Queen Elizabeth Stakes. But before we get there, let's go ahead and run this Fukushima Kinen Grade 3. A desert runner. But yeah, like I said, today was one of those housekeeping episodes. You guys know every blue moon. I just like to address certain things, especially based off of what I'm seeing in comments and discussions. That's usually why I, sit, I talk about the topics I talk about, because I'm seeing it happen. And I just like to remind people, like, take the pressure off yourself. Do well because you want to do well, and if you don't, just realize, okay, I'll get it next time. Like, you know, <laughs> we don't have to live life in such a stressful way. We, we, we do that to ourselves. We really do. You sit and think about it, you probably recognize some things that are probably adding a little bit more stress to your life than you need to. I, I'm realizing that. You know, pack okay, nice. As, I, as I'm getting older, like I said, I'm 32 years of age and I'm learning way more now than I learned in my early to mid 20s. I guess that just comes with age, wisdom, experience as well. I've been going through a lot of different things, but I'm just realizing some things we do to ourselves, it's self-induced, you know, like it's not actually somebody doing it to us. We're kind of allowing ourselves to be a victim to it. I just don't think we should do that. You know, <laughs> I want to be good at Galp Racer because I just enjoy horse racing and horse racing games. There's no accolades for being the best Gallup racer player in the world. There's nothing for that. Nothing at all. <laughs> Closest thing is you being good at like a tournament in a community or something, which I do want to get back to. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Good run here for Desert Runner, and this is why I wanted him. His endurance has really helped him out, and this race is over. No more whip. I have a furlong left to go. Desert Runner running away with this. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's an easy grade three win for our boy. Dominates that. Let's go. Cannot wait to use him for breeding. I think we're going to get really, really awesome endurance horses out of him. I don't have a broodmare in mind yet, but once I do, I'll let you guys know. But if you guys have any suggestions, feel free. Based off of the current horses we have, I don't really want to go looking for a horse unless it's like a really, really special, unique horse that we could use. But five lengths could have beat that by a lot more doesn't matter we get the win ah your first big pride great Ugh, thank you thank you silver thank you not like i need your acknowledgement but still i appreciate that you think i ran a decent race because you know hats off to the horse man i'm the jockey i know jockeys are extremely important um when it comes to horse racing just like drivers are when it comes to motorsports but without the horse and the car being there you're just a person floating in air, going at like 40 miles an hour on a horse, or in Formula One's case, 200, mi 200 miles an hour. 
just really crazy to think about. It's part of my fascination with motorsports. Humans able to drive machines that quickly and deal with the different G-forces, five times your body weight. Max Verstappen's crash at Silverstone a couple of years ago, for those of you that remember, what was it, like 70 Gs? Do any of you realize how physical that is to deal with 70 times your body weight? Have you ever really experienced that? It's insane, right? Jockey, similar things. They're racing on thousand pound animals and sometimes they get thrown. Some of them that are able to get back up and, and be okay. Um, it, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous sport, man, like anything else. So I just, I always, I admire the jockeys, the drivers, men, women across the world that can do these sports. It's not for the faint of heart, you know? <laughs> Drivers, even for um, harness racing, I, I I do respect everybody. If that's your occupation, if that's what you do, I respect you because that, that takes a lot of skill, man. And it's not as easy as people make it seem. Not as if I've done it, but I, as an athlete myself in different sports, I know how challenging that is. And people that haven't experienced that or haven't played many sports, they sometimes look at it and think, oh, it's easy. You just play sports. It, it's a real work. It's a grind, man. Even the best athletes in the world, they're the best because usually they work their you-know-whats off to get that good. It's no different for horse racing or for motorsports or anything. So I, as a fellow athlete myself, I always respect others that um, take on that challenge, so to speak. So guys, last race of the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed. We've done well for the most part today. First, lots of firsts and seconds. The occasional fifth place finish, which according to my notes, is only two fifth place finishes. <laughs> But uh, depending on the day I'm having, sometimes I don't want those. But today is okay. This is me getting back into the game. I haven't played this game in over a month. Keep that in mind. Like I haven't played in like five or six weeks. So not a bad day. Uh, here we are with the grade one again. King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth Stakes with Glam Queen chasing the GWS Turf Championship here. Not the favorite. By Gentle House, out of free fear. You are related to Cafe Bronco, if I'm not mistaken, right? You are, you guys are complete siblings. Good abilities. Who else is in this field? Why do they think you're you're only good enough to finish fifth? Rare Emerald, okay. Rare Emerald's really good. Legal Station, okay, good. Grand Shell, okay, separate. Separate Mark, what? I, what? Hold on. Who are you? This is a horse I don't usually run against in my game, so I'm a little bit perplexed. Okay, you're decent. Yeah, you're solid enough. Okay. I'm feeling a little bit slighted here. I think like Glam Queen should at least be projected to finish second or third, but you know what? We're just going to have to go out on the track and prove it. Oh, man. Well, um, it's been good progress here today. Horses that I expected to win with or finish well with, we've pretty much done that, and... The horses we've struggled with, more or less, are the horses that I have expected to struggle with, which is Irish Hill, Naked Chariot, who just missed out on finishing like third, really, in that dirt race a couple races ago. And then earlier in this episode, um, Little Mai, she's well past her prime, two years past her peak, her finishing fifth in a grade three, still not terrible for an old gal, right? So let's, let's go ahead and end this with the bang, Glam Queen. And you get out with a rocket start. We got to go to the front anyways, but she can run as a closer. If the pace is too hot, I may settle her back. Ah, oh, who is doing this? Exact ruler. Stop it, bro. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Nielsen, calm your horse down, please. Ah, my fault. Drifted a little bit too much. The thing is with Glam Queen, I, I like to get to the front with her unless I... You know, I just, I don't know. It has to be a really extreme case. We need to slow down, people. We still have a ways to go. Like, oh, I hate that the AI do this in my game. I hate it. Like, you guys don't experience this with the AI running this crazy? Yeah, like, yeah, calm your horse down, bro. You, you don't need to be running that quick. We still have seven and a half furlongs to go. Oh, messing up my, my rhythm here. <laughs> it's the only reason I, I'm not super keen on front runners in this game because you're at the mercy of this stupid ai man who just they treat a 12 furlong race like you're running a 750 yard sprint at los alamitos like it ah, doesn't make any sense i just sorry if it feels like i'm ranting you guys know i'm just talking this is just how i do galbracer stuff believe it or not i had somebody get really mad about that one day in the comment ah you're talking too much yeah my, my gameplay videos have been commentary for over half a decade are you new <laughs> you know what i mean like 
That's how I know some people are completely new and they don't watch me because they just say things that if they watched the video, truly, they would have understood. Yeah, that's how it's been for a while. Sorry to sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> All right, Glam Queen, let's go, my girl. You got this. The bookies are dis. <laughs> the seven is coming. Who is that? That's Grand Show with NGO on it. One of the best jockeys in the game. AI jockeys. Oh, come on. She's going to tie her out. <sighs> what am I supposed to do there? She ran her heart out. And you notice how I had to run the first four furlongs of the race because the stupid exact ruler. Did you even finish in the top 10, bro? Did you finish in the top 10? Because had we not had to push that pace, you finished in eighth. Yeah, go figure. That's exactly what I mean. The AI can mess up your race depending on... And I know uh, Elite, if you're watching this, I know you've been busy with school, bro. But if you're watching, I remember we were talking about this. You said you kind of experienced the same thing in your game sometimes. Where the AI can absolutely ruin your races if you're on a front runner. I'm experiencing the same thing and it hasn't changed. Like, had we not had to compete with that fast pace in the beginning? And granted, it's the GWS. I know, it's supposed to be the best turf horses in the world. We beat Rare Emerald by a length. Grand Show smokes us just in the end by length and a quarter. Exact Ruler, if Exact Ruler would have stayed in their place and just chilled off and not tried to compete with us for the lead, we probably win that race. Burned her out a little bit. <sighs> yeah, not my fault, bro. Like, if I would have tried to keep her at that pace, she would have burned, she would have burnt out a lot sooner. I've done that before and I've learned from it. Sometimes I just have to sacrifice the fact that I can't run as comfortably as I want at the front. But again, I'm at the mercy of the AI. If exact Ruler isn't pushing us for the lead, I settle Glam Queen in comfortably. She can lead that race for the majority of its length by at least a length or two. And then I can get her going when I need to get her going. She has a little bit more energy in the end. She was completely burnt out. That's a tough race course to run on. Um, trying to control your horse going down that slope, that's not an easy task. Um, she finished second clearly by a mile. She almost won it. That's why I'm like fifth place. Like, Glam Queen's better than that whatever so looking at the updated standings nothing for the sprint the turf glam queen storm out both sitting there with six points i'm glad at least this is going to be competitive i'm kind of scared though i feel like this is going to go all the way down to the last race because this is a tough stack of gws turf horses this year sparking nova grand show little house and rare emerald alone those four horses alone are tough and uh, we have to compete against them for the entirety of this season but you guys know me i love the challenge so i am game and still, I don't have a win, yet I'm winning the GWS. I'm leading because I finished in second place all those races. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I can tell you guys, I don't have to be the best. If I finish in the top three, I'm cool. Like, when I go racing, I go um, karting. And when I say karting, I mean, you guys know the type of karting I'm talking about. Not your, you know, your mom and dad, grandpa go go karts. Like, these things can go 70 miles, 80 miles an hour. When I race with my friends doing that, which I probably will try to do some vlogs of that maybe this summer on a completely separate channel. I'm undecided, but I want to do that. Um, winning is great. Don't get me wrong. It's very hard when you're competing against such good, you know, fast drivers. But if I finish in the top three amongst a really tough class of, of opponents, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I can improve. It lets me know I can still improve. You know what I mean? So um, that's just kind of how I've been motivated. I don't have to be the best at everything. If I can be in the top echelon, the top 10% or whatever of some of the best, then that's okay with me. You know what I mean? Like, I like to win, but I'm not, like, obsessed with winning like some people. And that's what I think I'm, I, I'm starting to realize. Some people are legitimately just obsessed with winning. I will never be that person a day in my life because you can win without being obsessed with it. You know what I mean? You don't have to be obsessed with winning to win. Um, but, you know, whatever works for, for, for people is what works for them. It's, it's not my place to tell them that they can't be i just i don't think that's healthy i don't think it's healthy to be so obsessed with winning but granted sometimes you see it it works out but you know if you're not going to be the hall of famer of what you're doing then at that point i, I don't know i don't see the point but everybody's different i guess that, that's what's special about us all being unique we all have different ways of going about stuff it's just i have friends i see them and i'm just like bro you're stressing yourself out because you're obsessing over this like let go of the obsession and I think you'll realize you'll probably have a little bit more fun with it, right? I just like to see my friends, my family, you know, whomever. I just like to see people have fun with what they're doing and not stress out about it because they're setting these unrealistic expectations on themselves. And 
their day is ruined if they don't win everything all the time. It's like, well, don't set yourself up for that. Aim for the win, but do your best. Sometimes that's all you can do. Sometimes all you can do is do your best. You know, I don't have kids yet, but that's why I would tell my kids. I'm like, if you win, that's great, but do your best. That way you don't go through these ups and downs of feeling like you're not worthy or you're not good enough because you're not winning at something. I know people's parents. I've been around people with their parents are super negative and just, you're not winning. You're worthless. Like, 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 excuse my language, especially if you're younger. That's so shitty. That's such a shitty way to go about being around people. I just hate some some of the ways sometimes people can treat people they supposedly care about. I'm like, uh, how, how can you consciously do that? You know, I, I will never be like that to my kids. As long as I know they're giving giving it their all and they're trying and they're trying their best, that's it. They don't have to win. They don't. They don't have to win everything, but they're trying their best. Eventually, you will get wins out of that. And that's what I think is ultimately important. So, you know, I just I like to remind people of that, man. I just don't think we're having those type of conversations enough in life. And then we wonder why we feel crazy and why we feel so out of whack. Like, it's not healthy, man. It's not. <laughs> It's not a healthy way to live, I promise you. It's responsible for high blood pressure and a lot of other things that you can control. It really is. I'm telling you from personal experience from family members I've, I've had that and even in some of their pursuits, they were super obsessed with it. I'm just like, this isn't healthy for you. But, you know, they they didn't really want to listen. So it just I care about people. I care about all of you in the community. I see some of the comments and I'm just like, take the pressure off yourself. It's OK. I'm telling you that it's okay because I believe you're talented enough, you're worthy enough. And again, excuse my language, fuck anybody else that says otherwise because they're not really looking out for you if they're telling you that you're not worthy or you're not good enough in some essence. Now, they came at you sideways and they're disrespecting you and you're retaliating or you're responding and you're sticking up for yourself, different story. We've all had to do that with people, but somebody, if you didn't do anything intentionally to anybody, you weren't being negative or derogatory or anything like that and, and they're just giving you a hard time different story you know what i mean but it just amazes me sometimes how awful people can be to one another wondering why the world is really messed up is because we don't have empathy or compassion for one another we think how we feel about something is all that matters strictly i have to remind myself every day all the time like whatever i'm stressing about it could always be worse there are people going through some really really crappy stuff right now man you got to keep that in perspective because, you know, it's, 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 it's not fair to some other people that are going through hard times. And then you stress yourself out over a video game of all things, you know, like priority, like get your priorities in check. Um, I'm just trying to put Desert Runner in a race. Grade three, 10 furlongs. Can you run eight furlongs? But again, I, I do try to, you know, just remind people, like if nobody's telling you this, I want to be the person, the friend that tells you it's okay. Because, again, we don't do that enough and we wonder why people, why mental health is, is a pretty big crisis, not just in my country, but worldwide. We're not normalizing healthy things and we're normalizing the unhealthy things. I don't understand it and it's not good. <laughs> and um, it's just important to keep that in perspective, man. I'm sure technology has something to do with it. Like, Technology has made people think that social media and these things are real. They're not. <laughs> they're not real yo if technology and the internet went out today your profile my profile it means nothing in the real world right the real world where there's still animals and different species surviving that stuff means nothing to them and that's how life used to be right sorry if i dumped a lot on you guys but i, I felt it was important i just i see a lot of things and i just i have to talk i can't keep quiet about certain things i have to speak and if people look at me differently or judge me it is what it is, man. You're going to believe what you want. I was going to do it today. Hope you guys have enjoyed an hour and a half's worth of Galbraith 04. More of it to come. I may record a little bit later on tonight. It's only 1030 where I'm at, but I'm hungry and I want to take a break and get some food in my system. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to let me know any thoughts, comments, whatever you want. If not, no big deal. Just you guys watching is enough support for me. And as always, I appreciate every single one of you that do that on a regular basis whenever you get uh, the free time. Uh, so yeah, again, expect more real horse racing discussion coming again, more Galbraith 04 content. The videos will be back to this type of length. Uh, it's easier for me to keep track of everything. Pretty good day. Like I said, a lot of firsts, a lot of seconds, and then the occasional fifth place finish, which again was only two. I keep saying it like I finished fifth like 10 times. I finished fifth twice. 
and on horses that were probably supposed to finish fifth anyway. So that's going to do it. Appreciate you guys. Much love. Make sure, remember, keep your head up, man. Don't listen to anybody trying to bring you down. Do what's going to keep you in the best peaceful, positive state of mind as you can be because it's a lot of stuff going on and sometimes you can lose sight of that when you're busy with your day-to-day -day jobs, your work, schooling, whatever. You got to remember to take the pressure off yourself. Remind yourself you'll be okay. Do your best and you'll watch that anxiety with certain things will become less and less. It's a skill like anything else. You have to learn it. I took me years to honestly get it to the point where I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with that now, but it takes time. But just take it a little step at a time. You know, all the great feats and evolutions we've made in human history took time, years, long time to build, right? It's the same thing with habits. It's the same thing with, with your thinking. And I want to look out for my friends and my people. You guys matter to me, so it's important that if somebody's not telling you again, I, I would like to be that person. I've ran it long enough. Hopefully you, you all have a great day, evening, wherever you are in the world. I will see you next time. Major G sending out. Goodbye.